Hello, I'm Charlie Brooks and welcome to the I Am Pro Community Q&A. Today we have the gorgeously talented Stephen Kavuma with us. He is a writer and theatre director. He is the founder of the Diversity School Initiative, which I can't wait to hear a little bit more about. And he's currently heading up the Foundation Drama and Acting course um, at Arts Educational, which is where I went into the year. So without further ado, I want to bring him in. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Charlie. Hello. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all good, thank you. How are you? Really good. Really happy to have you on here. Really excited about hearing a little bit about your journey into where you are now and what you do, if that's all right. Where did it all begin? Did you always sort of have a passion for storytelling and theatre? How did it How did it start? Yeah, I think for me, I've always had a passion for sharing stories with people. Um, I started writing at the age of seven um, and, and didn't know that I was writing plays or script. I was a massive Doctor Who fan and I liked this idea of escaping reality and um, going somewhere else and, and letting my writing do that. And ever since then, I've sort of investigated ways of being involved in theatre and what theatre mm -hmm. is. You know, I started off as an actor, wanting to do actor training, and then realized actually acting is in my path and I want to write, I want to make stuff. And then yeah. writing and then directing and producing. So all the different pots to kind of get involved with, I've always been investigating, yeah. Stephen, when did you have that realization that actually you didn't want to be an actor and that, you know, directing or alternative or writing was going to be more your thing? Yeah. And was it easy to let go of that, you know? It was, yeah, it was. I, I was in college at the time and everyone was starting to do auditions and and we were sort of, it was all sort of becoming very actor led. Like we must all go to drama school and do a BA in acting and we all want to be in Hollywood and all these stuff. And I just was like, I don't really want to do that. And I think what, um, was the thing for me the light that went up in my head was i wanted to have ownership in stories and i wanted to be allowed to um tell my own stories and i think for me as a young black boy growing up in in britain um this idea of wanting to be seen and being represented and being heard and i just didn't feel being an actor i would be able to feel represented or i, I would be able to feel heard and um, writing and directing gave me that ownership of my stories, right? I was able to tell the stories I wanted to tell. I was able to cast the people I wanted to cast. Um, and then I kind of let go with it and was like, oh, that wasn't my path. That wasn't where I was meant to be. Um, but I, even now I still go back to the actor training I did in college because it, it, it's so, I understand what it means to be an actor. So I understand when my students are coming in and where those insecurities are coming from and why because i've also been in that place that position of wanting to make it of wanting to go to drama school and do an acting course um of learning lines so it's not foreign to me yeah yeah and did you go to drama school and was it was that did that come after college because you did a course at the royal uh, uh central did you yeah i did a, a course at central in playwriting so I, it was a playwriting oh, writing okay yeah, in applied theater so i knew um i knew i wanted to have drama school training and what i mean by that is um i don't it, i don't necessarily have to be a, a drama school to have that i just needed to have that more rigorous more focused uh more nuanced kind of training detailed training that i knew that some other institutions at the time were not offering um right. that's change now because a lot of universities are looking at how they can be more drama school led um and have more um what's the word more practical work uh mm. and more you know detailed analysis of stuff rather than submitting essays and all those things um but the playwriting course at central was the perfect fit for me uh, and it allowed me to investigate um why I want to be a playwright and who do I want to tell stories for and why those stories matter to me. Um, in a way, I didn't, I hadn't, obviously, because it was new to me, I hadn't investigated uh, uh, properly, but yeah. Brilliant. That sounds really exciting. So um, 
you're currently at, at Arts Educational. Can you tell us a little bit about what the course that you're working on off, uh, di offers for its students um, from sort of what would be required for entry um, and what you teach? And I guess you bring all of that beautiful stuff from, you know, your playwright and in storytelling into the, into the classroom. So what, what might someone expect if they were to come on the Foundation Drama course? Uh, so the foundation is a, a year course. Uh, it's a proper year long on full time. It's um, it's sort of like it's like a gap year, but not a gap year. It sort of prepares you to get ready to drama school because the training is very full on, uh, very rigorous as well. Um, and we, you know, we're doing tech studies. We go from doing voice to movement, all the kind of lessons you would we do TV and film, all the lessons you'd expect in a um, on a BA course. Uh, but it prepares you for that rigorous training that you would get on a BA if you wanted to. However, that isn't the journey for everyone, and um, which is great because people are starting to discover if it is acting, if acting is for them, um, if actually they'll be better at producing or they'll be better at uh, writing or directing. And um, we are also facilitating those journeys for them. So I guess actually what it is, it's an important course to understand where you want to be and yeah. we facilitate and have um, make that journey possible for you. Um, which is the really like, exciting thing about it. Um, yeah. What else? What, what is the age group, Stephen, of that course? Um, it's normally anyone from 18, um, right. 17, 18. Um, and, you know, yeah. And you, you, you audition for the BA course at Art Said, you know, you go in, nobody audition outright auditions for the foundation course. They do if they want to. If you personally think you're not ready and you know you're not ready, then absolutely audition for the foundation course but when yeah. you audition for the BA course and you don't get in they do offer you the um, foundation course because they see something in you they see a potential in you and they just you just need that extra bit of year to yeah to grow a bit and to learn more which is what the foundation offers yeah no I think it's great because so you know like you say so many people dive in and you know, they might be making a wrong decision and it's a really expensive mistake to make. <laughs> you know, you've got to know what you want. And I think they also look for people who are comfortable sort of in their own skin a little bit and have a bit more experience, you know. So it's um, it feels like it's, um, you know, it offers something really beneficial, actually. Um, and could you just break down the classes that you offer there? So we said about voice and about... Um, TV and film. What is the structure? Is it full on every day? Just yes. for people that have never, you know, have no idea about this sort of thing. It's full on every day and we're based at the Lyric Theatre, which is not far away from Arts Ed. Um, it's actually fantastic that we're based in the theatre, so you actually get to understand the ecology of a theatre and how it works. Um, and you get to be in that building with lots of different actors, with lots of different directors, professional people who are making work live there with you, which actually I don't think kind of get that opportunity in being in a drama school because everyone is all, you know, sort of drama school. Um, and there's text analysis. So we get to, you know, work and analyze the script in a full, proper full in-depth way. Um, I spend weeks and weeks and weeks analyzing the script and analyzing characters, um, analyzing character motives and all those things. We have monologue classes. Again, these are full in-depth monologue session classes where you go through your monologue, you practice it with a professional monologue teacher um, who offers you feedback and helps you. Uh, we have voice lessons as well, all about grounding and introducing you to voice. A lot of people come in and are not comfortable with voice. Voice is such a precious um, mm -hmm precious thing and it's a very personal thing as well so just a lot of people have not been confident in saying this is me this is what I have to bring to the table and um, knowing how to walk into a room as well is a very important thing uh, because you're you are judged on those things on the first time you do an audition so uh, it's important that we give that training to people but um, and then in the final term, we work on a full play, um, which we do at the Lyric Studio. Um, and it's to a, you know, done to a live performance of an invited audience as well. Um, so again, you're, you're actively doing stuff 
and you know doing rigorous stuff so we're not just doing you know 10 minutes of something we're doing a full length play um and we're doing a full on length rehearsal process as i would in any um work on any play um what's really i think important is that I've just recently got the job. So I haven't come from a drama school background. I haven't been teaching in drama schools for 20, 50 years. I'm not um, part of that fabric. Um, and, and, and there's nothing wrong to be, there's nothing wrong about that fabric, but um, I come from making plays and being in rehearsal rooms and um, working with theatres and working with people. So I'm able to offer what that is like to be in a rehearsal process, to know what it's like um, to an annotate the script, to know what it's like, the different rehearsal process that you will be having. And that's really important because a lot of people are not going to go to drama school. Some of yeah. them might actually go on straight away and go into the industry. And yeah. this is the year to kind of get ready for that jump. And that's OK. That's what we have to offer. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we look at big plays. We look at big plays. Um, you know, right now we're looking at Blue Orange. Blue Orange uh, is a play that looks at mental health, that looks at Amazing. racism. You know, we're having huge discussions about race and racism and politics in a way yeah. we haven't had before. Um, we we worked on uh, a play called The Wasp by Morgan Lloyd Markham, uh, another huge play about class and 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 gender, gender identity, and how that plays together, and trauma as well. Um, and on the final plays that we're doing, 448 Psychosis and DNA by Dennis Kelly. Again, these are huge plays, and it's really important that even though it's called the foundation, that we don't. Um, watered down any of our training. We're not here to baby or to handhold anyone. We're really here to offer the best training for people. And and I think it's important when we're offering these big plays that we, we're understanding the humanity of each other and ourselves and mm -hmm. um, getting to understand everyone else, um, which I, I think is an important part of theatre training. Absolutely. And, and and do you tackle writing at all within the course or? We don't. Um, more performance based. Yeah, it's more performance based. We do support people who want to uh, make their own stuff and write their own things. And we do have a, a in duologues now, we're starting to ask people to write their own things inspired from the material that we're working yep. on. Which, we're introducing the idea of playwriting and making and um i've been constantly supporting students as i come from a playwriting background to mm. to you know and and i think it's important when we kind of say that because um some people think you either have to be one or the other you either have to be a director or a playwright and actually i like being both and i think it's really important to say to people you can be an actor as well as a playwright that yeah. can happen you could be an actor playwright and um, it's us saying, what does that look like? How can we support you in that journey? You know, what do you want to do? What kind of school facilitates that, yeah. that for you? Um, but yeah. People are very quick to put us in boxes, aren't they? Yeah. And keep us there, you know. And I, I, I think, you know, the, 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 the next generation has to be about smashing out of those boxes, in my opinion, and, mm. and in their own way. Um, uh, so at the end, after you've done your play, is there an opportunity then for agents to come down? It's so hard, isn't it, for people to get agents? Mm -hmm. you know? And I know that going to drama school, that's when they come down and see the showcase and they might sign up, you know, the next big thing or whatever. Do you have that option um, when you do your play at end of year? Yeah, that is an option. And, and people can invite agents. They can um, invite collaborators. They can invite people who want to see their work or makers it's uh yeah, yeah we, we invite we encourage people to invite people who they want to come and see their work I think that's really important that we yeah. are at beginning stages of networking and what does that um how can we do that for you you know yeah we do encourage it amazing um I wanted to speak to you a little bit about if people can't afford to go to drama school, is that the be all and end all for somebody looking to get into the industry? Like what 
would you offer as an alternative suggestion to kids who it's just out of their reach, young creatives, you know, that have sort of explored it but can't even get to the bloody audition, you know? What, what are your thoughts around that? I think it's... Um... It's really, obviously, it's a really rubbish situation and um, it's really unfair as well. That's a massive class issue, right? You know, um, it's who who gets the opportunity of, afford, of being able to afford to be in a room and who, again, is offered that opportunity and luxury to audition for 10, 20 drama school, yeah. you know, because you can afford the money to go and do X and Y and Z and whatever, when some I mean, people can only do it too. It's 50 quid an audition, isn't it, or something? Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. insane. Um, there are some schools that offer bursaries. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we offer free um, auditions for people who can't afford it. Um, so if people are in need and want to, that is something that can be done. Um, but you don't have to go to drama school. You know, you don't have to. This isn't the, this isn't the destination to make it. You know, there is no, there is no route, actual route to make it. You know, there is your path, and that's your journey. And you can't look at other people and go, "Well, Judy Dench went here, or whatever went here." And no, that's that's irrelevant. Judy Dench went to Central at a very different time. You're going to wherever you're going at this time in a world where we're still, you know, getting over being in a pandemic. You know, this. It's a different world. So you don't have to go to drama school if you don't want to, and if it's not for you. And there's amazing organizations like Open Door, um, yeah. NYT, and you as well, I am pro, um, yeah. which is important because it's alternative routes, right? It's alternative routes to how to get there. And I think people need to remember that we, we never stop making alternative no one's given unless you're really privileged no one's given the right path to that's it that's the one line that you're going to do you're going to make it yeah. we're all constantly grafting still constantly hustling still getting through and that's just part of the industry um so you don't have to think or feel like because i didn't go to drama school i'm not a good actor i'm not no that's okay that's you're a great actor um yeah it's drama school wasn't part of your journey and that's okay that's fine yeah 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 no there's lots of other avenues that people can explore for sure I'm totally with you it's not the be all and end all you know um can you talk to me a little bit about the diversity school initiative that yes. you set up yeah the diverse school initiative set up when I was in first year of drama school uh myself and uh mame atwa and mumba dodwell um were put together this event called dear white central and we um we just wanted to have a conversation with the school central about its racism and diversity they didn't want to have that conversation and mean. no and um we realized actually it was a bigger thing that it wasn't just central it was a collective thing happening all over all these other different schools uh so many people from rada from uh you know scotland from canada and america got in touch with us and said hey this is also happening in my institution and these things and we were like wow it's actually huge and um we set up this organization to be able to support, um, to represent students, to put students' voice at the table, um, mm -hmm. and to put diversity on the agenda and to also make sure that schools are held accountable. That was the thing. You know, when we first started, all these drama schools were able to do whatever they wanted and they were able to practice really unhealthy ways of teaching and which were racist sexist ableist classist all the worst things you can think of um yeah. Yeah. and i'm glad that now we're seeing that change and shift and it's becoming the the training that we have now as a collective as a drama school collective it's it's much more inclusive and much more representative to what we used to have it's not it's not amazing and it's not you know it's not the best thing ever but it's better than what we had four or five years ago um and there's been a lot of shift and changes to who's 
um, who's now in charge of those drama schools. It's amazing that we have Judy Spencer, who's um, the principal, um, the, the uh, director of acting at Arts Ed. Um, mm -hmm. I think the first, the first black person um, to hold a senior position at any drama school. Wow. You know, um, a new principal at Central now, uh, who's the first black person and first woman in over a hundred years to have hold that post as a new principal of Central. And that's, you know, we're seeing these shifts happen and it's really great. Thank and it's God. really, it's, it's, yeah, thank God they're happening. Um, but it was, the Diverse School Initiative was to make sure that our training represented the society and the world we lived in. And we weren't, you know, making people be, we weren't training people to be like Laurence Olivier or Judy Dent or all those people, that we were yeah. training people who they are, when they came in. We're not changing people. And that's the important thing I say, Art said, I'm not changing you. I don't want to change you. You know, they come, they come in with all these ideas and thoughts about what drama school is. And I'm, I'm not here to change you. I'm here to work with what you have and I'm here to see you and your potential. That's yeah. it. That's all I care about. Yeah. And um, that went missing in my training because no one saw me. No one wanted to see my potential, my lived experience, my stories. And I have so much time for my students. And I think everyone here at Art said and um, other drama schools as well have so much time for their students to see them and to readdress that imbalance that we had um, five years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and, and that is stab that's still uh, still yet to change. Yeah, um, sorry, you just broke up then. That's oh, I mean, absolutely wonderful. It just froze for a second, it's okay. It's um, really wonderful to hear, because I think at that crucial age as well, um, it's helping you find you a little bit, you mm. know? And who you want to be in the world, yeah. Yeah, it's such a vulnerable, vulnerable age and time to come at drama school because mm. you're constantly being told by so many people about you. Yeah. You know? And um, so many people are telling you who you are, where you come from, how you sound, how you move, how you act. And it's like, that's so damaging in terms of your identity that you forget who you are, who you really are who you are when you came into that audition room, you know, and you start to present this idea of who you think we want you to be. No. And it's, it's wrong. It's very, yeah. Because that's where all the juicy stuff is when, mm. you know, the people have got to be comfortable comfortable enough to go there and the work that you, you seem to be doing is mm. crucial and fantastic. So let, let's talk about you because we've got a little bit of time left. As, as a theatre director, Stephen, what, do you look for in a script? And can we just, because I quite like getting as much practical advice for young budded theatre directors that might be looking at this Q&A. And what is the first thing you do to break down your script? So what I look for in a script is I look for um, really, I look at new writing. I look at beautiful writing. Um, so new writing is often, um, writing that is not classical work, not Shakespeare, not um, um, Greek or, or, or any of the classics. It's contemporary work. It's work that represents this world, this society that we're living in. And I love that because it's on, um, it's on the nose of what we're going through, right? And, and, I, and that's exciting, yeah, because I don't think sort of people can authentically, I know people say Shakespeare lives through time, but it, it's not authentic. You know, he doesn't speak my language, my world, and he doesn't understand it. So I'm mm -hmm. constantly looking at new writing and new plays about the kind of world we're living in and the kind of people that we are. Um, plays that pick apart our kind of um, idea of humanity and um, characters uh, is a really, you know, big thing for me when I'm looking at it play um and big things themes big political themes as well so uh looking at race class uh sexuality um gender all these really uh big big ideas are important to me because again they're personal of course yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. um and when i'm looking 
through a play, I, I or when I'm working on a play, I'm a, I'm a very text-based director. So every director is different, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. talk through um, that. Talk through that for those that are watching. I don't know. So some directors are really much about the production. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't give much fuss about what the text is saying or or you know all those you know i spend weeks and days going through analyzing for a script because i love that because i really want us to unpick that world and some directors would spend a week going through that text and go bam let's put it up and let's get the stage on um and that's okay each director has their own process and i think what's really important is about finding your process and your voice as a director, uh, because each process is as valid and as wonderful. Um, students are walking past, so you can hear them. I can hear them. <laughs> I wish I was a student there in your class. <laughs> so you can oh, hear wow. them going through. Um, but what uh, I was saying, Let's yeah. Talk about so breaking I, down the script, what your process as a director yeah. is. For me, I come from a playwriting background. So I think the writing is is gold dust the writing is our clue right and we have to search yeah. for and represent the writer um so where does that line come from why is that there i have big flip chat paper i discuss i break it down and i i go the world of scene one right here i'm only exploring what's happening in scene one what's happening and i you know we go such things like uh they're getting killed in scene one or they have a gun in scene one or um they're talking about this big idea i'm just exploring the world as it stands in this scene and then i'll start to explode i start to break it apart and go through scene by scene um exploring the world of the play and then by the end of it we'll have a collective thing whether we would have gathered information about the whole world of the play that we can all have and understand. I never move on um, until everyone knows what we're talking about and what we're doing. I think that's so important. Things can get lost and um, people can go on stage and they don't know what they're doing or why they're saying that line, where it comes from, um, what does it mean? And I think it's important that everyone is on the same page. Um, yeah. My rehearsal process is very collaborative. It's very collaborative led. So I don't um, think of myself as the leader, as the director, as the person with the power. I think it's important that we all have something to say and bring to the table um, because then we're starting to understand each other and starting to understand how the play, the characters, this world relates to me, you know? And I think that's important. It's not just about me and my vision. It's about everyone else's ideas and everyone else's things that contribute to also my understanding of, of the play. You know, I've done Blue Orange for so many times and I'm now doing it. And one of the students said today, um, it's really interesting that um, Christopher is given, Christopher, this black male who's had uh, a an episode uh, and comes into a mental health institution and is looked after by, by these two white men who either you later find out are not, um, they don't want the best for Christopher and they don't know what they really are doing and are actually harming Christopher more. But yeah. this, student said, um, this student said, it's really interesting that, <laughs> Um, Christopher is given an inexperienced doctor to look after him. And that changed my understanding of the play because it's interesting why a black male has come in and is unwell and he's not given the best doctor to look after him. He's given mm -hmm. somebody who's kind of not fully experienced. Um, mm -hmm. And they, you know, they spoke about their experience in being um, with, you know, National Health Service and and um, how some people negate and neglect black people. And I think those conversations are important. Yeah. Um, and we wouldn't have gotten to that if we were just talking about my experience and my vision for the play. And that's what I mean by collaborative, collaborative directing. But each director has their own process and it's about finding what works for you still as much as you can from different directors and different producers, different makers and people. Um, I'm not so much interested in um, 
the design and not the design i'm not so much interested in big productions in terms of having a big budget production i think theater can live and exist anywhere it can exist right here you know in this zoom um or in in a physical space or or on the phone and that's the beauty of it right mm -hmm. um so you have to understand what you want to do what you don't want to do what works for your idea what doesn't work for you but yeah. still as much as you can collaboration is king and i think words are powerful and sometimes that's all you need you know yeah. absolutely to hear the words thank yeah. you oh wait, one more question before you go look we're doing really well for time i i feel like we've only just scratched the surface but yeah. just <laughs> what is the one thing that you wish you knew as a sort of your younger self um 13 14 year old steven um with a head full of dreams what is the one thing that you wish that you knew um the one thing i wish i knew you on the spot yeah um so advice i suppose i guess it's um that I matter and that I am worth yeah. being seen. Um, and I think that's really important when people are coming us to their youngest age, to the vulnerable moments, to know that you matter, um, to know that you are worth and no one can give you worth. You can give yourself worth, you know? And I think that's important because yeah. all people can't get over the rejection of being rejected by drama schools because they're still looking for validation and worth from these institutions and it's important to say i don't need that i don't need that sticker i don't need that thing on my cv i am enough and i'm worth it that's what i wish somebody would have told me i am yeah. worth it. and um yeah that's just remember right. that that's and wonderful. also Remember that you you're auditioning the drama schools, not the other way around. You know, really important that you feel a good fit for you. Yeah. Stephen, you're a dream. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving up your time. And I hope I've not stolen too much from your students there that I can hear in the background. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been Sending a pleasure. So much love. And we hope we see you on IM Pro platform again very soon because you've got a lot to offer. Thank you. Thank you.